it was like magic. It was really like experiencing a new dimension. Working on the dance floors is really about transformation and uh, it can be about transforming something inside or uh, transforming the way in which we're interacting with another person. Nonviolent communication is very much about connecting with the present and the past might come up in the present as a kind of trigger that reminds you of something that's important to you but it's connecting in the present and then seeing where you can go with that from here on. So there's this kind of creative energy in being involved in a dance floor process. I was uh, standing in front of the supermarket, and a car stopped, and they parked a car at a parking space that is designated for people with a physical um, disability. And that really, really makes me angry. My situation basically is about uh, me having running a business together with my husband. Uh, we have a business in graphic and illustrative design. And there are so many situations where uh, my private life and my private stuff get mixed into my business being and the other way around. With my life partner, if she's really upset, and especially if her voice gets raised or something like that, I have a tendency quite often just to shut down completely. NVC is short for Nonviolent Communication and it's a practical and a learnable process that was developed by a man called Marshall Rosenberg. Well, NVC is a, a very simple process, um, but at the same time it has a lot of depth and it's a process to help us to communicate from the heart to bring meaning and effectiveness into our communications. So the dance floors um, offer a certain unique ways that support the learning and practicing and teaching of NVC. It's like a spatial map that we put out on the floor, cards that you step onto, and there are different dance floors for different aspects of the NVC process. You can go anywhere, but so just see where you're drawn first of all, being aware that there may be some judgmental thinking going on and at some point we'll explore that but you may want to start somewhere else. Yeah, with feeling. Um, a very important general feeling I have is that I'm really happy to be able to live my life like this. Working with the dance floors is, isn't a linear process. So there's no here's where you start and here's where you finish. Um, it may look linear because the steps are laid out on the floor, um, but it's a dance. You really like to be seen. And I want to be seen and I miss it. So I want to be considered and I want to be accepted and I, all, I miss all this. No. I'm wrong, I'm completely wrong. something about being able to physically move that keeps me flexible so that I don't get stuck in any one feeling um, as I'm rather than kind of sitting down and, and getting lost in here I'm kind of much more open um, my feelings can flow more we put down some ribbon as a frame which represents our intention that as we step into the dance floor our intention is to purely connect so when somebody's on a dance floor, one of the things they're looking for is what will develop that quality of connection? Where shall I go next to develop that quality of connection? There's an aspect where I'm not just in my head. There's a sort of a physical understanding of where I need to move next. And when I'm in a, on a different square, something sort of slight, I don't know what, what comes over me because, and then I feel different. The learning process will happen whether you're dancing on the dance floor, whether you're role-playing somebody in a dialogue, or whether you're present to, to witness and support somebody doing their dancing. I would like to share a moment that touched me quite deeply. And when you were standing on a judgment and blaming card, you were sort of exploring what do you really need. And then, and then you said, let me make it, Richard said, you made a sort of guess, might it be support, and you stepped mm. on the need card, and I saw your whole postures change, that really something deeply was happening, and I could feel it, and wow. Would you love support to cope with it? 
Yeah. I would like support. And there's something about um Um, something about wanting my efforts as you know puny as they may be to 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 be seen then you see that there's just this synergy going on where everybody's benefiting from everyone else's presence because the person who's on the dance floor also feels uh, they're doing something universal something that comes across about the humanity of their experience by the feedback and the sharing and the questions from the other participants. The dance floors are used in public workshops, training people in NVC. They're also used within prisons and schools and businesses, all sorts of organizations. My students are social work students and nurses, medical doctors, lawyers and others. And I always go via the self-empathy dance. It has been a good help for me in my teaching and very much so for the students as well. And they love it. Mm. They really love it. Mm. And they need it. The beauty of this 13-step uh, dance floor or anger dance floor or empathy, self-empathy dance floor is that it helps me to center myself and it brings more clarity. Many people use the dance floors, uh, people who are therapists, counsellors, coaches or people working with NVC in a one-to-one -one setting. They've found that some of the dancers uh, really work well with their clients. I use the dance floors with couples. I'm a couples counsellor. And I find that really a useful tool to help people see the underlying concepts and processes of nonviolent communication. I've used the dance floors with teenagers in the inner city. Everyone can access the dance floors, whatever the learning style. The colour coding helps, the words, the stepping through. What happened was this person said something that really irritated me. I felt annoyed, frustrated and upset. I believe that I need to be comforted and not pleasant. And I would like to talk to this person about what they said. It's for everyone. I'm an entrepreneurial scientist. And I'm a movement therapist. You can work in settings where not everybody can read and write and they don't need to even acknowledge that because uh, with the f shapes, all the dancers have a certain shape and with the colour coding, within a very short time people know where they are and what card represents what. Uh, getting away from like mental processes and sink in feelings is a very difficult thing for me. This dance floor exercise really helped. When I stepped on the feeling part and I could feel literally the tears coming up, uh, that was easy to feel. It might be painful feelings that you're feeling. It is painful for me to experience yeah. when there's no connection between people. And that, So that painfulness now is there? I can sense that one yeah. right now. Yeah. There's exactly. the sadness yeah. coming out. Yeah. yeah. So it's just stay with that if you're yeah. willing to. Stay with the That's all right. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. Painful. It's a strong longing for that. And if it's not there, it's Take your time with the sad. words. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down your words a little yeah. bit if you're willing to. Just because I see that feeling stirring in you, and there may not be a lot more words for it, but it's a, it connecting with the shift there, the sadness and the painfulness. Yeah. The dance floors are translated into eight languages now and are used in lots of different places around the world. It gets slightly hard to think definitely for sure of where a dance floor is not used. It's, it's joyful and playful. It helps us open up with uh, everything we are. And we, are, we have a lot of fun around uh, dance floors. The value of filming the dance floor process is to give access to more people. Um, we, we think and we've heard from many people that it's a powerful tool for learning, for practice, for transformation. And so of course we'd love as many people as possible to have access to it. We're even hopeful that people will be able to start working with the method and that will be an additional support tool to the facilitator's handbook and the guidelines that we have for basic guidelines for the dancers and the other support tools that people can use so that 
they could just be using this method independently of anyone teaching it to them. And I'm really, really excited about that. She is always dominating the whole family. <laughs> she, everything is con under her control. She okay, stop there. <laughs> you know what you do? <laughs> so what I, why I'm asking you to stop yeah. is, is to take this one judgment and to translate that one. So we're beginning to like take them through I don't, rather than pile them up as a sort of backlog. <laughs> <laughs> when I find myself in this situation, I will, I will make a choice just to speak and trust that I have the means or that we have the means and resources to, to deal with whatever the consequences of that are. And that's what we're looking for here is that what is it that you think you can do? What's this doable sounds, for you? This sounds like a doable beginning for me. So. Yeah. I feel really touched by this process. In the NVC course I did, I used language to find find out these things but it's really different from from physically go with each step mm. and yeah I'm touched by it. I'm back again. So my deep deep gratitude goes to both Gina and Bridget for having co-created this wonderful tool that helps me learn and facilitate NVC in a playful way with ease with joy, with compassion, and I just can recommend it to everybody. So thanks for listening. Bye. Ciao.